Hey everyone. So in this video, I'm going to describe some of the different types of joints available in the Box2D library provided with the LibGDX game framework. Now, I won't be giving specific code examples in this video, however I will demonstrate the Revolute joint, and I'll also give small descriptions on each different kind of joints available to use. Um, now, there's only eight that I will be covering because I feel the they're kind of like the top eight of the ten available, um, such as the mouse joint being more of a debug testing utility, and the motor joint is available in another joint, which I'll also demonstrate here, uh, called the Revolute joint. Now, the demo, uh, just a very small example of combining or joining two bodies together can be seen here as a static box body connected to a dynamic circle body. Now you'll notice this blue line here and that is how the Box2D debug renderer will show the joints between bodies. It's uh, blue and you can kind of see that the Revolute joint acts as like a hinge kind of joint such as how a door is connected to a wall. Um, now, to go over to this slide here, we'll see the eight different types of joints I'm going to be covering. Uh, they will be in the following videos that will be part of this tutorial series. And to start, we have the prismatic joint, which are kind of like hydraulic sliders. It allows for a body to move or slide along a defined axis. Uh, this can be useful cr for creating elevators or moving platforms or any kind of sliding elements in your game that require the physics of box 2D. Um, now we'll move on to the Revolute joint, which was demonstrated just a second ago. Uh, that, again, is kind of like a hinge type of joint, and you can set parameters to have restrictions of angles. Uh, you can also motorize them and provide a set amount of torque that they're allowed to spin at, and different kinds of things like that. And I'll, I'll, of course, cover all that when we get to that video. And then there's the weld joint, which is essentially linking two bodies together to act as one. Um, it provides a constraint for all relative motion between the two bodies. Um, an example would be like when you take two Lego bricks and hook them together, and you'll notice that it just becomes kind of one thing, or one entity. Um, and then we have our distance joint, which makes sure that the distance between two points established uh, via the anchor points uh, between two bodies remains constant. Um, this is kind of like, y you can also make it so it has a soft distance, uh, which you can have a setup like a springboard or a kind of trampoline platform. Um, there's a lot of neat things you can do with the distance joint. And then we have our rope joint, which essentially describes itself. It um, has a particular property that's good for building ropes in Box2D, such as restricting the maximum distance between two bodies. And the nice thing about that particular restriction factor is that even under high load, the rope will not stretch or go into weird moments where the rope isn't actually acting like a rope because of bodies acting on it too hard, causing too much strain on it. It will maintain that rope-like property to the best of its ability, um, which is better than using a revolute joint or a prismatic joint, etc. And then we have our gear joint, which can only connect to Revolute and or Prismatic joints. And uh, a gear joint is way, way better than actually creating your own gear polygon shapes, um, as it offers better flexibility for fine-tuning the amount of rotation, uh, because you get all that extra data alongside it, you're able to watch those. Uh, the torque properties of it, and it's also more efficient. That way you don't have to, like I said, create those gear-shaped polygons and line them up manually, and then they might get out of sync if they get bumped in a weird way. And you can create some pretty advanced uh, structures with that. 
And then we have our pulley joint, which is a little bit more complicated to think about. Um, it's used to create what is called in physics an idealized pulley. Uh, the pulley connects two bodies to a ground and to each other. As one body might move up or to the left or right or whichever direction it's uh, oriented, the other body will receive that extra slack and move down. Um, the total length of the pulley uh, rope is conserved according to however the bodies are set up in the beginning. And uh, then we get to our wheel joint. And the wheel joint is really nice and because you get an actual like almost suspension system with the wheel. It's kind of a side property and an extra little feature you get with this type of joint. While some people might use a revolute joint just because revolute joints do have a motor and they rotate and people might think uh, it's easier to just use that to make a wheel on a car or a cart or something. The wheel joint has a that suspension capability which is really nice for more uh, st structured cars and you don't have to create your own suspension system and you get to choose the dampening on it and such. And so with that, uh, there's going to be links to all these joint types that will appear over uh, each title here, something like that, uh, on the YouTube video. And uh, as they become available, uh, more of them will have the links. And so with that, uh, like, comment, subscribe, the usual, and I hope you enjoy the videos and the videos to come. Thanks again.